shocking claim from Russia. NATO will divide Ukrainian territory between countries of alliance. French President Emmanuel Macron has brought up the idea of sending NATO soldiers into Ukraine because members of the US-led bloc are plotting to divide up the country. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said, Macron first suggested two weeks ago that when it came to NATO boots on the ground in Ukraine, no option should be off the table, but was publicly disavowed by most NATO members. He has since argued that France might send its own soldiers should Russia break through to Kiev or Odessa. All these statements that Macron and other NATO politicians make about the possibility of introducing contingents or some kind of paramilitary units into the territory of Ukraine are related to the partition of what they see as the remnants of Ukraine. Zakharova said at a press briefing in Moscow, territorial aspirations help explain why Kiev has not been invited to join the bloc yet. Zakharova argued, this would require all NATO members to recognize Ukraine's borders and not all of them are willing to do so, she added. She said that they are ready to occupy and partition Ukraine. The moral preparation of the population in both NATO countries and Ukraine is already underway, Zakharova said with some politicians speaking about such an outcome openly. All this is happening as usual with NATO members under a false flag. They talk about countering Russia but are in fact starting to divide the remains of Ukraine between themselves, she said, adding that this should serve as a warning to those who entrust their fate to NATO. As for Paris, Zakharova said, French troops invaded Russia in the early 19th century and again in the early 20th. France would do well to remember how that ended. Russia fears new incursions by Russian volunteer units ahead of elections. Russia is using conscripts to defend its border with Ukraine and Russian mill bloggers are predicting new incursions by Russian volunteer units ahead of the presidential elections. The Institute for the Study of War said this. Military analysts believe that this is likely due to Russia's reluctance to redeploy troops from the front line to other areas. Institute for the Study of War has been following reports by Russian military bloggers who noted that the incursion took place a few days before Russia's presidential election on the 17th of March and warned that similar incursions could take place in the coming days. The Russian FSB has claimed that during an attempt to infiltrate Russian territory, over 100 fighters breaking into the country from Ukraine Ukraine were killed and dozens of pieces of equipment were destroyed. Meanwhile, on social media, Ukraine's volunteer soldiers from Russia are posting videos showing the use of firearms and the destruction of Russian equipment on the nation's own territory. Specifically, the Russian authorities claimed the alleged destruction of six tanks, 20 armored vehicles and a self-propelled artillery unit and the death of 100 fighters. The FSB claims that the saboteurs allegedly failed to break into the territory of Kursk and Belgorod oblasts, and Russians continue to strike armed groups in the border areas of Ukraine. But military volunteers from the Freedom of Russia Legion are claimed to have taken full control of the Russian town of Tyotkino in Kursk Oblast. The town of Tyotkino in Kursk Oblast is completely under the control of Russian liberating forces. Putin's army rapidly left the town, abandoning positions and leaving heavy equipment behind. The Freedom of Russia Legion said, U.S. Senators urge Biden to stop arming Israel. A group of Democrats in the U.S. Senate has called on President Joe Biden to stop providing weapons to Israel until it lifts restrictions on Washington's humanitarian assistance to Gaza, according to a New York Times report. The Senate approved an emergency national security aid bill last month that would send an additional $14.1 billion in military aid to Israel, including $10 billion for offensive weapons for the country's war against Hamas. The New York Times cited a letter by Senator Bernie Sanders, an independent from Vermont, and seven Democrats who urged that by continuing to arm Israel, Biden was violating the 1961 Foreign Assistance Act, which stipulates that no assistance should be provided to any country that restricts directly or indirectly the transport or delivery of U.S. humanitarian assistance. We urge you to make it clear to the Netanyahu government that failure to immediately and dramatically expand humanitarian access and facilitate safe aid deliveries throughout Gaza will lead to serious consequences. As specified under existing U.S. law, the group reportedly wrote, Sanders separately told the New York Times, 
I hope the President understands that a growing number of members of Congress and the American people in general are sick and tired of seeing the destruction of the people of Gaza and the creation of mass starvation. Biden announced last week in his State of the Union speech that U.S. forces will build a temporary dock on the Gaza shoreline to allow delivery of humanitarian aid on a large scale. The decision to open a sea route for aid into Gaza had come amid Israeli obstruction of road deliveries and growing warnings of a widespread famine among 2.3 million Palestinians.